Hi everyone, it's Caitlin, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead of doing some sewing, although we will have a project later on, we're going to dress out our somewhat new um, early 19th century washstand. Alright, so Rhett and I found this at an antique store. Um, Rhett saw it, well, I saw it first, I really didn't say much about it because I was like, oh, like, it's a nice wash stand, I don't really know how to date furniture too well. Rhett saw it, it's like, oh, that's early, um, and so he did some research, found out it's probably like 18 teens to 1850s, it's like that Federalist time frame, and so we took, so it came home with us. <laughs> and it's not in the greatest condition, so I think we're going to see what we can do with it today, fix it up. I have my eight, I have my 1780s, 1790s side saddle behind it. It's gonna go right now to what's going to be the weaving room because I don't have space for it. Eventually, it's gonna go into the guest room. Right now, though, I, gotta, I guess I gotta move this out. So, wedding quilt that I've been working on. That's really what the saddle's been. It's been a um, nice landing pad for the quilt. All right, that's moved out. We can move this. I think we're just gonna kind of put it in the corner. Maybe kind of like a corner centerpiece. I forgot this thing was on wheels. Lady, you may not want to be back there. Alright, so this is the stand as is. It looks in better condition than it is, so we're going to fix some things. Alright, starting here, the mirror has popped out. I gotta figure out how all this kind of goes out. And I have, all, I think, all the wood pieces that makes this mirror stay. So, wood pieces, another wood piece, this is a candle stand, there's one on this side right here, this one just fell off, so we're just going to glue it right back in there. Okay, there's a knob that's supposed to go up here, I'm betting it just got misplaced. Oops. So without the knob, I'm having a hard time pulling, oh there it goes, there it goes, there it goes, okay cool. Alrighty, this does kind of pull up and out. So now that that pulled out, I gotta figure out how to get this mirror in there. This if I remember. Oh yeah, yeah, it pulls out like that. And then you have this so you can actually make the mirror go out so you can you know, put it to your height and you can put it to the angle that you need. It's a really heavy mirror, but it is the original one. veneer steel but it's, it's in a plastic baggie I guess it it's probably still in San Angelo you know what I think for right now because I don't have all the pieces that's gonna stay Oops. There it goes. it'll stay in as long as you don't move the mirror out this will stay so I think we'll, we're good there all right I have wood glue not the most historically accurate choice but it should work all right there's a Kind of rougher side and a smoother side. I'm assuming the smoother side goes on top. I'm gonna get this to stay up. I need to find something that's like this size to hold it down. Otherwise, I'll be sitting here for a few minutes. Which I guess isn't the end of the world. Okay, spool thread plus USB memory card converter equals the exact height that this was at. All right, on the bottom. So at the bottom of the nightstand, um, this back corner isn't attached. That's gonna need a mend, and that's beyond my capabilities. So we're gonna dust it off. Okay, and something very light could go here. I don't know what that's going to be, but something can. Here comes the dog. All right, so this is why this particular cabinet was sometimes called a commode, because you put your body in here. I have a chamber pot. We're gonna put one in here in a minute. We're gonna dust this out first. All these little extra wood bits I am going to put in the corner until I figure out what goes where. Chamber pot. This is um, an antique one. Um, no idea how old it is. I bring it to events occasionally, especially when the bathrooms are so far away. Um, it has one handle, so it is a chamber pot. Um, if you have your grandmother's or whoever's 
soup tureen. It has one handle. That wasn't your grandmother's soup tureen. Uh, that was her chamber pot. So one handle chamber pot. And it has a nice little space directly for my chamber pot. Moving up just a little bit. There is this what I thought was a false drawer, but it actually isn't. You can see where there used to be a drawer and there's space here for a drawer. So this used to actually be a drawer you can actually put things on, but at some point that fell off. So some, and I didn't notice that till today. So this will be a down the road project, but I'm gonna have to have maybe my dad or somebody make us a nice little drawer for our, just to kind of finish that out. So I believe this was a shaving table. So like sh little shaving cups. So I don't know if these are original to the table or not, but they're very pretty and they do fit in here. And they did come with the table. This also came with the table, but I know this is not original. If this thing dates to 1910 to 8, if this dates to 1810 to 1850, enamel products weren't around yet. Those came out later in the 19th century. So this is definitely not original. But if it came with something that was porcelain or china, that could have easily broken. And then they replaced it with this. So this does go in here. It doesn't quite fit anyway. You can kind of see it's a little bit too big. I need to measure the uh, lip exactly, and that way I can maybe, when I'm, that way whenever I'm antiquing, I can look for a nice pitcher and wash basin that'll actually fit in here, because I'd like to have an actual pitcher and wash basin that truly does fit in this space, whereas this one does not. That isn't dried yet, but we are gonna go ahead and put a candlestick on the other side. Fun little decor piece. At this point, I think I'm gonna put some hairpins in here. I'll save the other one for Rhett. Maybe he'll have something he wants to put on the other one. And what I might end up doing is having one side be more my stuff and one side be more Rhett's stuff. Bobby pins. Not historically accurate to this time period, but it's what I used in my day-to-day -day life, so. And then a single hair tie, because I don't keep a lot of those. I think I have like two or three of these left, so when I do go through them, I'm not replacing them. I'll stock some products. These I used to use on my face. I have zero skincare routine anymore. Um, and I used to, and I'd almost like to get back to it. And of course, all my skincare is historical. So it's a face wash. And, I, and that one was supposed to be for morning. This is what I used to use at night for my face wash. This is the cream I'd use after the wash. And technically I do have some perfume as well. This is not a sponsored video, but this, but all of these are little bits historical on Etsy, and I'll link them below. I use them for, if I'm not gonna make my own historical skin, face, and hair care stuff from period recipes, I just buy from them. They already had the recipes figured out. They have you know, loads of scents. They have these really cute labels. A lot of my stuff I do make, but I did buy these, and I haven't used them up yet, and I'll probably continue using them unless I decide to go back to making my own. Hair brush and comb, mine was falling apart, so I finally found my replacement. I bought it like last year and I forgot about it. And I packed it away, but I finally found it. So that's gonna go there. Fun story, I went to go move the mirror down and I put the big bottle right here and then um, accidentally my elbow knocked it down the ground and it shattered. So um, that's fun, because that was a lot of product. However, my wood floors smell really nice right now and they probably will for a while. I, wop I mopped it up, so I think we're good. But I did have a smaller version of the same product because I didn't like to bring that big thing to events. I was using that in my modern skincare. So I do have a smaller version of the same stuff we can put here. All right, that's my side basically done, except that I need, the big thing for today is I need a pin cushion. My modern skirts, I close with safety pins. But they're meant to be adjustable and it just means that my clothes fit me if I'm bloated or if I'm losing weight or gaining weight or if I get pregnant, they'll fit me whatever and they still look really nice. So I have a bunch of safety pins I need to put on a pin cushion. I also have hat pins that need to go on a pin cushion because I've been taking to wearing hats. I need more vintage hats now because I've been taking to wearing them. But I need hat pins, especially if we go riding in Flossy. Definitely need a hat pin for that. All right, welcome back to the sewing room. We're going to make a pen cushion, and we're going to vagely follow a pattern in 1858's Goaties, but I'm going to see if I can get away with only doing three sections instead of six. This would be less like a star, more like a triangle, which you also see, but I like the design of this one in the sense that the, um, 
the outer fabric and the net over top. I really am a fan of net over top of things. I think it looks so nice. And instead of silk, I'm using linen because I want it to match my bedroom. So yeah, this is the color that we use in our bedroom. So I'm trying to see if I can get, that's still pretty big. I think it'll work. Okay, we're gonna cut some of the net, the spotted net. That's really being saved for veils, but I can steal a corner of it, I think. I'm gonna need to iron it though. I'm trying to waste as little net as possible. This stuff is like $50 a yard. This isn't necessarily a period correct project because I am kind of taking my own liberties with it. But I'm going to sew that together and then this one will go onto this side so we'll make, oh sorry, this side. So it'll kind of make it to a point and still kind of give me the shape but for the three pieces instead of six. Alright, so the finished size of this, excluding seam allowances, is about four inches. So do four inch squares. So I did four inch squares. So basically I did four and a half inch squares. So I'm doing like a half, a quarter inch seam allowance. So now I gotta cut the bottom for this thing. And it's not gonna fit onto this, will it? Ugh, so close. Show me iron it first. Alright, I stitched on the bottom, leaving a little hole so we can turn it right side out. So, I have here, it's just cotton batting. It came in, I think, some sort of medical shipment that needed to be kept cold, and this is like the insulation. We're gonna make it pretty full, so get all the stuffing into the corners. Probably would have been helpful if I had had a piece of cardboard or something that I stuck in there for a bottom. So a little bit more. Stuff out this corner. This is a little lumpy right now, but we can fix that. Go ahead and pin this closed. So we're going to sew this on when we sew on the trim. Alright, I pulled out one of my millinery needles because that's going to be the easiest way to do this. I'm doing just a very loose back stitch. Trying to attach the whole thing. Just gives you a nice little ruffle on the bottom. So it's looking more like that. So I have a rather large thing to put up here. I think I can use my normal needle for this. And I'm not entirely sure why we need to have a ring on the top, but it's what the illustration shows, and it looks cool, so we're going to add it. The mine is a bit bigger, but I also have a bigger pin cushion, so... And this means you can hang the pin cushion if you like. I don't think I'll hang it because I have nowhere to hang it. But I could hang it. Alright. Now we have top ribbon to put on to hide where the joint is there is why I didn't really care about the what it looked like. Alright, I think we have a little pin cushion so we can go ahead and put all my pins on top of the pin cushion so we have a finished little nightstand but look how cute that turned out. Let's do it a little flatter, there we go. So I have a bunch of these hat pins I have in white. So I have a bunch of these hat pins I have in white and black so we're gonna put white on one side of the pin cushion. And like sometimes on pin cushions they would like spell words out like if it was if it was an infant's pin cushion they would put things like baby. Uh, if it was a bridal pin cushion they would say bride with the pins. But I don't have that many pins and I want to do each section with a color, so we're gonna just put them in here.
Alright, so this is done, so I'm going to go ahead and put this right there. I don't have any candles right now. I looked, all of mine are broken in half, so I need to make some more candles. So we're not going to put candles in them yet, but they will eventually. But there's our lovely nightstand, all ready to go. So the wall is very empty above it, and I'm thinking what I'll do eventually is to hang all of our vintage hats that we wear just on nails and that way they'll have be like a cute little display corner um, I have my hat pins right there which make that super convenient and that'll decorate the corner a little bit more so what I have left to do is to find someone to make me a drawer put the cat put the hats up and put can and make candles and then Rhett can decorate his side however he wants so I think that's about it for today that was a fun little project one day I would like a full-on toilet table, like a dressing table that I could sit at, and that would be very nice. But for now, we don't have the space for one, and we have this, which is a nice little compromise. It's smaller, it definitely takes up a lot less space, but one day I would like to be able to make a tablecloth for a dressing table, and all the little things, like the matching pincushion, handkerchief case, and glove case, and, and all my getting ready stuff can be on a table, and that's like a dream down the road, maybe when we have a slightly bigger house. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Click the little bell notification so you're notified anytime I upload a new video. As always, have a fantastic week. I'll see you back here in the next one.